Hey everyone and welcome back to the news. So, pre-orders, love them or loathe them, they are a big part of the gaming landscape today. And, uh, well, they're pretty much the only way to go if you actually want your games or your hardware on release day, at least if it's some form of physical item. And uh, just about all the recent ones have blown up and were kind of exploited. So today, we're going to go and we're going to take a look at what the hell went down for the PS5, the Series X and S, plus NVIDIA's 30 series, which was not... Uh, exempt from the chaos. Of course, we're trying to drive up to 250,000 subs. Most of the people who do watch this channel are not subscribed, so hit that subscribe button and the like button when you're down there. And with that said, let's get going. I think it's pretty obvious that Sony are the winners of the incompetency reward because uh, PS5 pre-orders were a mess and they were made worse by Sony. Sony made people wait ages for pricing and release date information. They even set up their whole register your interest website ahead of time, which actually made it look like they were sort of planning this whole thing out and that it could be useful that way. But of course it wasn't to be because while people expected a pre-order date to be announced at the September 16th show, showcase and to probably be maybe, you know, a specific time and date, maybe the following week. That's not what happened. The pre-orders went up the following day, and while that could be imagined as a cool mic drop moment, it didn't play out like that. What's worse is that retailers were confused. Many open pre-orders that night, despite assurances from Sony that that wasn't really the case, and that led to complete chaos. Walmart opened early. GameStop crashed. Amazon released their pre-order slots in the middle of the night seemed a bit mad. It really did not work, and perhaps it's not all strictly Sony's fault, but I would very much say that this is a big breakdown in communication that should have never happened. I mean, how do you get the pre-orders for your big new console wrong? I mean, Sony repeatedly themselves said that pre-orders would not happen, quote, within a minute's notice. And they pretty much literally did. Now, Sony have since apologized for this. They said, let's be honest, PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother. That is true, but it's still not good enough. Now, they have promised more pre-order stock and uh, more consoles being released throughout the year as well, which should be a bit of a consolation to people who did miss out. Though that said, Amazon have actually already warned that some existing PS5 pre-orders might in fact be late. So it seems like Amazon don't even know how much stock they're going to be receiving. So yes, it was chaos, but it wasn't the only chaos. NVIDIA's broadcast from Jensen's Kitchen sure did send the world on fire, and so did the pre-orders, because, well, pre-orders, you know, they live and die in a mixture of hype and perceived scarcity, and I would say more than anything else here, NVIDIA's really show this in action. People felt like it was a next generation of graphical tech and that it would be limited. What happened is that NVIDIA were overwhelmed by demand. The cards were sold out literally everywhere. Now, NVIDIA have since apologized for the way that things went down. They said, that neither they or their partners were prepared for the launch. And this is the important bit. They had 10 times the traffic of the 2080 and 2070 launch. Now, while this is a video that's primarily focused on how these pre-orders pretty much all went wrong, that's big. I mean, the 2080, 2070 series, it was cool for ray tracing, but it didn't get people extremely excited for the gains that were there. Many people were still happy with their 1070s or the 1080s. This really does mean that this new generation from NVIDIA is is absolutely massive, and that at the same time that these big console purchases are happening, it seems like GPU purchases are pretty much at their strongest point ever. So I think that's interesting. I have to wonder how many people are looking at this console gen, seeing, well, a bunch of these games are probably going to be on PC anyway, and just thinking to double down on PC, with PC, of course, performing extremely well over the last bunch of years as the console generation began to slow down. And I think it is that situation where, yes, these consoles excited people with graphics, but then NVIDIA went there, and they kind of just showed what a lot of people will have felt like was a bit of a next level. And you kind of think if PC gaming is at this stage now, what's it going to be like in five years? So I really think it makes sense that even with consoles eating up people's like pre-order money, that Nvidia still did extremely well. Now, this traffic, of course, going back to it, meant that uh, whenever Nvidia's store page actually went live in pre-order day, 
it all went out so quickly that the card pretty much looked like it was instantaneously sold out. Now, this was a bit of a problem because it meant that customers who had queued, well, most of them ended up missing out. It also meant that the heightened traffic actually, uh, you know, delayed sales and stuff being possible on the site because it was falling over. And also, NVIDIA ended up pausing their mailing list, meaning the customers were not notified. Yes, it basically means that it all went so fast that stuff just fell to pieces. Now, there was also issues of, um, of course, resellers using bots to secure pre-orders before then scalping them off on eBay. Now, for this, NVIDIA have said that they have manually cancelled hundreds of bot orders. Kind of, I don't envy the people who've got to do that manually. That would suck. And uh, they've said they're going to continue monitoring um, sales as more stock becomes available and to hopefully fix the bot problem. Capture has been enabled and integrated onto the checkout. Now, I'm actually pretty surprised CAPTCHA wasn't there, or there wasn't some sort of anti-botting measure, but there you go. And they have also promised a increase in supply weekly. Now, of course, scalpers are always an issue when it comes to pre-orders like this. We obviously saw that happen with the PS5, and uh, even with Super Mario 3D All-Stars on the Switch, that was also pretty heavily scalped. Now, what's uh, worrying is that these pre-orders only covered the RTX 3080. The 3090 is going to be dropping later this week. I imagine it will be lower quantity, higher ticket price, so it'll go super fast. But then there's the 3070 that's not until next month. Now, 3070 seems like it's going to be the sort of premium mid-range PC gamer, like ideal value pick for price to performance. That means that competition is going to be absolutely brutal for that. And if there are any botters, I imagine they'll be trying to up their game as much as they can. So yes, NVIDIA, they'll probably do what they can. I think the question is, will that be enough? Then next, a very big week for Microsoft culminated in them opening up pre-orders for the Series X and the Series S. Now, the thing here is that Microsoft were, I think perhaps in direct response to Sony's failings, well, significantly better when it comes to communications and outlining exactly where and when pre-orders would actually be up for their consoles. And this was even to the stage where they were actually tweeting pre-order times on a per-retailer basis per region. I mean, that's great. And Xbox would be nailing it on their social media communication. So people did know exactly how to get their console. But things, of course... We're not really that simple, were they? Because the more expensive, more powerful Series X uh, also seems to have been the most popular one. And that does, I think, make sense for the heavily engaged pre-order audience. And because of that, traffic seems to have been very heavy. Here in the UK, both of the Xbox All Access, which is the extreme value, basically buy the thing over two years and somehow it's cheaper program. Uh, both of the retailers who are in that, which are Game and Smith's Toys, they saw their websites knocked offline, meaning that the the only way to pre-order the console was at full price, provided, of course, that you could even find one. Now, internally, we missed out on this completely for the Series X, and we only got it once game site actually went back online again much later in the day. Now, as for Amazon, well, they sold out of the Series X very, very quickly, and the Microsoft Store, of course, uh sucks. It was full of very unhelpful error messages and not a whole bunch else. Then Curry's PC World, uh, that of course in the UK, sold the Series X uh, out extremely fast to the point where we were positioned 104,000 in the queue to, uh, to buy. And that's where our queue was for the Series S as well, but we did nab one on Amazon. Now, Game also did a whoops when they actually listed a Series X and a Turtle Beach, a new Turtle Beach headset for uh, £319. That's $410, which uh, would have been quite a deal if it actually was real. So that was a problem. Now, things were actually somehow even more chaotic in the USA, where the Microsoft Store crashed, the GameStop Store crashed, Walmart crashed, just about everything was bad. What a mess. And then there's also some weird metrics. I mean, the Xbox One X, an old console, its sales rank went up 747% on Amazon. Now, of course... That's a measure of popularity, not a measure of sales. The console is discontinued, so obviously stock is low there, but still, a small number of these could have actually been sold. The sales could have spiked. You've got to wonder why. I mean, is that confusion over the name? It could be. That would be surprising to me from, like, customers who are pre-ordering things. I don't know. Maybe it's some confused parents who don't really know what they're buying. I mean, certainly the Xbox naming convention is, uh, is dire. I mean... Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, One S, One X, Series S, Series X. What's going on? 
Also, though, I guess it's not completely outside the realm of possibility that some Xbox One people think now is an okay and cheap time to get an Xbox One X because maybe they think, well, it'll play the next few years of next-gen games and it's got a disk drive so it could be cheaper in the long run. That could be the thing, but to be honest, that doesn't make too much sense to me. One thing that is very interesting to me is that the Xbox Series S did not have availability issues in many places. You could drop into pretty much anywhere on any stage in the pre-order days and still be able to get one. I mean, that's what I did and it seemed easy enough, at least here in the UK. Now over in the Sony side for the PS5 Digital Edition, it is still widely sold out, but rumors do suggest that it actually made up less than 25% of Sony's pre-order stock. Now, the thing with these is they are the cheaper ones. I think the early adopters are more likely to go for the big, full fat, expensive consoles. Also, there are the various different price traps. Um, I think that the digital PS5 is in a funny situation because your lifetime cost of ownership, I mean, look, if you're totally married to digital only games, sure, get it, whatever, but you won't be able to get pre-owned and you won't be able to participate in any retailer discounts to the same way that, uh, you know, you can if you're on a physical disc where you can have retailer discounts from so many different reta uh, retailers. If you get the all digital, you're limited to only the Sony store. So that does mean that I would say your lifetime cost of ownership will be going up with that, but still, it's a pretty good value value for getting full next-gen power at that price. Now, for the Xbox Series S, this is something where a lot of people got angry when I said that I didn't feel like it was true next-gen. Now, yes, on paper, does it have the same CPU? Yes. Does it have a GPU of the same architecture, albeit significantly less powerful? Yes. Those things are the case. I also don't think they particularly matter that much. Yes, we're talking about 1080p gaming right now, but here's the thing. The Xbox One came out in 2013. Look how it runs things now. This is the, the, the Series S is weaker. It's the base version. So comparatively, like relatively speaking, it will be less powerful than the Xbox One is for or was for its time. How's that thing going to run in five years? Also remember, Barely any 1080p screens are being sold today. Now, this is fine if you've got maybe a five-year-old television that you've got now, it's 1080p, whatever, you don't care, you're fine for the 1080p gaming. But what happens when you get a new TV in five years? You know, do you want your TV to be 15 years old or whatever? This is the sort of stuff that I'm getting at because these console generations last for seven years. And for me, it really does seem like going for the PS5 digital. I mean, ideally, I think you should probably just get the Series X or the full PS5. I actually feel like that's the more future-proofed option that's not going to get you in a situation where you've always got to buy digital games, so it's going to be a bit more expensive for new releases if that's what you're interested in. And then also you're in a situation where you're thinking about you've got to expand your storage because it's all digital. And then also you've got to deal with that uh, for the Series S that it's probably not going to run that well when it comes to maybe five years into the future and uh, just problems like that. So to me, it's actually no surprise that the cheaper, that the cheapest console that is the least capable is the one that's not actually being sold out super fast. And that indeed it's, uh, you know, the, the sort of, I would say, better long-term value consoles that are the ones that are selling. It's interesting that it seems like a lot of people are coming to a similar conclusion when they're making their purchase decisions here. But that said, yes, early adopters will always want the big expensive one if, uh, if they can. As for those cheaper versions, I think they will struggle more now, but I think they'll probably pick up in the sort of Christmas pre-sales period where you're dealing with a lot more parents and generally a less educated audience in terms of the people who are actually buying them. So there you go. That's the situation. Every time Hyper pre-order here pretty much blew up in the faces of the companies who were doing them. The stores fell down everywhere, and yes, it was the big chunky boys that cost the most money that people jumped on the fastest, leaving the value options in a bit of a funny place where Sony didn't have as much stock of the all digital edition that was a hundred bucks cheaper, and Microsoft seemingly were not going instantly sold out on the super cheap, and I'd say still pretty good value short-term Series S. And yeah, it sure can be a nightmare, all of this stuff, but at least some funny things did happen, and that's what we're going to close today's show off with. There was outrage at NVIDIA, you know, and the resales that happened there that led to fake $50,000 bids on eBay, so that was fun. There's people flooding search results with their own paper editions that are made of uh, toilet rolls. There's one user, I like this, they got revenge on somebody selling an Xbox Series X pre-order for £900 by going into their eBay images and actually using the listings, and this is such an amateur move, 
unobscured confirmation number to uh, just call up the retailer and cancel the order because it's not within policy to scalp a pre-order uh, in the way that they were. So that was quite funny, and it's good to see the scalpers and the botters uh, lose. Hopefully, though, well, things will be a bit more robust, especially for NVIDIA. I think if the 3070 comes out and it's heavily scalped and has the similar issues, a lot of people will be very disappointed because I think a lot of people have got their hearts set on getting that new card. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Of course, if you enjoyed this and you want more gaming news and analysis, hit that like and sub button. It truly does help out. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.